just before I, I start today, let me just uh, make sure everyone is on the same page here. Now, today's exercise is to go through a sort of like a full-scale feng shui consult, so everyone understands how it is done. That's the purpose of our visit here today, because I assume that um, I was told actually that 90% of you are new, okay? So it's like you have never seen feng shui done in your life. So this is like your first time. Now, 10% of you have already done some courses before. So to you, then you will know this is how feng shui is done. So now, typically, when someone gets a qualified feng shui practitioner, or some of them call it feng shui masters from Hong Kong, you know, uh, from Taiwan to come and do a feng shui consult, it ranges roughly from 25,000 to 30,000 to do a house like this, okay? So it is, um, it's an expensive thing, so you guys should learn, you know, at least how the whole process is done. So in the, in the event that one day you want to get a consult done for yourself, you know what to expect. Okay, now in a feng shui consult, there are basically five steps that a feng shui consultant would go through. So every time you invite a feng shui practitioner to come and see a property, they will go through five distinct steps. Now, some practitioners will go through just three, two, depending on the scale of your consult, okay? So normally, the first step is to do an assessment, okay? That's step number one. What is an assessment? Assessment is they take the parts of the residents that are supposed to stay in this property, and then they will analyze this part, and then they will see if there are any problems with the chart, okay? The problems normally is classified under three categories. Number one, wealth-related problem, okay? So, seems that most people have this issue that they don't have enough, right? So, we have to look at, you know, so how do we fulfill this wealth? And usually wealth is achieved through two ways, okay? Two ways is number one, we we'll look at how to enhance the career aspect of the people because career represents the direct income okay but the true way to enhance wealth is not true just through career because you know career is finite if you stop working money stop coming in so we have to look at how we can enhance the you know investment aspect of the people staying in the property so normally the investment aspect is number one this property itself also must go up in value, lah, first thing, right? So you can enhance that. Second thing is also the people's opportunities to make sure that their money can compound. Okay, so that's the first thing about wealth. We're going to look at that as well, right? So number two, usually people have this problem, or they may have this problem and we got to fix it, is related to relationships. Okay, now relationships uh, may be intimate between couples, or it could be relating to family, or it could be relating to external parties such as you know, work associates and friends and all that. So the feng shui assessment need to look into as these aspects. After looking at the parts, you say, all right, this person has this sort of problem. Because your parts is the diagnosis. We got to diagnose. You can't just go to a house and say, all right, I'm going to do feng shui for this house. Do what? Okay, we don't know what to do until we know what the problem is, right now. So the process involves looking at that, that, the charts and we got to find out, okay, what those issues are. So one of those issues could be the relationship related. And the third most um, asked question on um, you know, doing a feng shui consult, the request is basically relating to health. Okay, so mo um, most people will say, oh, I do a feng shui, I, my main goal is to have ping ping long on, you know, so that you know, safe and, and, and happy, all right? So what they mean translated is they want good health, okay? So if they, have, they want good health, then we also need to look at the, the parts of the chart and say, all right, do they have certain problems? Not now, but maybe coming soon. So if the chart says, you know, they have problems coming soon, then we want to find out if this house is going to help settle that problem or not. Can we fix this problem or can we prevent the problem from happening? Okay? Or if they have current issues, they already are sick in some ways. Now, they may be, they already know that they're sick, or they don't know yet they're sick, okay? So, as the job of the feng shui practitioner is to find that out from looking at the chart. And then, <clears throat> with that, we tell them how to fix that, okay? So there are three things. Normally, all the questions related to doing a feng shui would be related to these three, usually, okay? No matter what they request for now. It is also very important that the feng shui practitioner 
that when we go into a, a consult, because you know, um, the client is investing a lot in the consult, right? So we also have to invest our time in making sure that you know the things good turn out that um, it works for them, right? So we got to set expectations. Okay, you cannot expect like, oh yeah, you know, you move in here and become a billionaire the next day. Won't happen. Okay, you got to find out. All right, where are you right now when you do your your consult? Where are you not right now? You're already a millionaire. All right, fine. How do you get to multi-millionaire status? Okay, if you're not yet a millionaire, all right, fine. How do you get to millionaire? Okay, listen, feng shui can create results only if you define what the results are. Fair enough or not? Right? You cannot just say I don't do feng shui and you become rich. What is the definition of rich? Okay, so. To do that, we got to understand, okay, from this chart, what are the capabilities? What can you do? What is the max? Okay, and are you at the max? How far are you from the max? Okay, then the planning of the house would be done in such a way that it will match your goals. That's what it's about. That's the first part of our assessment of the parts. And the assessment part, this is still part one, okay, of Feng Shui, is to also look at the external environment to assess whether the environment itself possess the qualities that are needed for those goals to be achieved. That's called the assessment part in feng shui. It's very important, okay? Because before you, the, the consultant can make any promises whatsoever to the client, the environment itself must have those positive qualities. Don't you think so? Because all the qi, all the energy that we talk about comes from the external. It does not come from what you see inside. It's not what you put inside, it's what you have outside, naturally. So we got to assess what is available and can we use it, can we tap to it, can we draw this energy into the property to achieve those goals that we assessed. That's the first part, okay? Part two is what we call the audit process. The audit process, as you know, some of our accountants here, auditors, what do, what do auditors do? They find the issues and problems, right? And then provide suggested solutions. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go inside the property and then we're going to find out, okay, so what the problems are. And then here are suggested things that you can do to fix this problem. Now, some of these suggestions would be immediate because it's easy and we see it. Now, here's one thing you must remember. In a proper full-scale feng shui consult, normally the feng shui practitioner would not give you all these things to correct on the spot. And you shouldn't expect that too. You know why? Because if he does that, it will be off the cuff. Because every good practitioner must spend significant amount of time to analyze their work and come up with a full-scale understanding report for the customers. Don't you think so? Because you know, you're going in, walking around, you may miss out on certain things. You know how many feng shui formulas are there? Thousands, okay? There's so many different formulas and possibilities. Even, you know, I've written a book called The Chinese Metaphysics Compendium. 1,500 pages, only on formulas, you know. Okay, how to apply all this in one, in one visit? Not possible, right? So that's why the third step, the third step is to do research. Okay, you want your practitioner to go back and research based on all the parts of charts, the family members here, and their goals, remember the assessment? Match it together then come up with a recommendation. You know, that's how it is, okay? And the fourth stage is, usually, what happens is they will invite all the, the, the residents into a meeting where they will also call their architects and their designers, and they will go through. All right, this is our recommendation. This is what we propose. Can you do it? Can you not do it? And here are the effects if you do it, and if it's, this is the problem if you don't do it. Okay, now that the architects and the designers know, okay, so this is what we need to do, then comes implementation. And the implementation is this, you know, now, you know how that, why people are so afraid of feng shui practitioners because, oh, after they do feng shui, they, they, they bugger off already, you cannot see them anymore, right? This is not how it's done today, right? They have to have a follow-up, okay? Usually it's a six months follow-up to ensure that it works, right or not? You don't want the guy to just run away, right? So otherwise you do feng shui, you pay so much, the fully disappear, no good. You want it to, you want these people to follow up. Okay, so now today we're going to do steps one and two. Okay, it is obvious we're not going to write the report together, right? So we're going to do steps one and two. We're going to assess this place and then we're going to provide recommendations. And I want to tell you the limitations. Remember, I have to set the expectations here. I got to assume that 90% of you are new to feng shui. So what does, what does that mean is if you're new to feng shui, that means I will be 
preventing going into very detailed level of technical analysis, okay? Which means I will refrain from using, you know, very detailed analysis techniques like um, Dragon Gate formations, Wan Choi, Five Ghost Carry Treasure, Yun Hong Tai Kwa, all those, all those technical stuff because you won't understand. I'll be talking Martian to you, okay? So I'm going to talk in the language that you understand. So I'm going to go with very basic analysis today. But still, I need to incorporate at least a basic level of, of feng shui, which I believe if most of you are here, means you've either read my book or heard of some of my work before. So you must have read Flying Star somewhere, okay? Right? Can I get a nod? Yes? Good. So you have read Flying Star. So I'm going to use a technique that everyone is familiar here so that you guys will understand how it's applied. Okay? Now, here's a few things. You do know that we have like 70 people here, plus the group over there is about 80 people. So when we go in to see the property, I need you guys to be a little bit more orderly and keep a little bit quiet so that you could hear me because we don't have speakers inside and you know I have to sing really loud. So just bear with me. So I will try that. I'll wait for most people to come in and then we'll talk. And don't, do not worry because I will do a debrief outside. Okay? So you guys will get all the points. What is the goal today? The goal is to learn how feng shui is done and you can pick back this tool so that you can also do it for yourself. Okay? All right. Let's begin with the first step. Now, first step is we have identified, okay? Now, first of all, a word to our generous sponsors today. OSK Group has allowed us to come and see this, this uh, project here. And by the way, I've done this project, okay? So this house here is their showroom, the show house. And we're gonna assume, right now, we're gonna assume that this is the house that you want to buy, okay? And you're moving in. And you've decided to move in already, okay? So we're gonna make as the assumption, we're gonna say, oh, we're going to buy, not to buy. If you're choosing the selection stage would mean you have to look at every single house. Now let's say you've already selected, which happens to most people, right? Already selected, so now we just make it good. So remember, if there's a choice, we always wanna select a house that doesn't need correcting. If there's a choice. Reason for that is because, hey, you know, if why would you wanna be sick and then cure it? Why don't you want to get you know, a chart, you know, a house that no sick, no need to cure anything? That would be the best, right? A healthy house. So assuming that you have chosen a house without feng shui in the first place and now you are applying it, okay? So we have chosen this and we want to do it. So there are a few things we need to do. We need to know the process of feng shui, which is the five steps. We're going to do step one and step two, okay? Step one and two involves the four major criteria in analyzing feng shui. Now, any feng shui practitioner that you pay to come do your house will have to go through these four points. Make sure they cover all these four points. And if you are doing it for your house, you want to cover these four points too. Point number one, check environment. Okay, you want to write this down. Check environment. I'll show you how to do that in a short while. Point number two, check building design. Okay. Point number three, check the parts chart. Okay, for our purpose today, we will use the gua numbers and the animal sign. Okay? Now, just so I know that you guys know what your gua numbers are. All right? Most of you know what your gua numbers are. Great. Okay? If not, there is a website for free in my, my website and you can print it out. You just have to key in your date and time above and the, the gua number comes out and the parts comes out. It's really simple. Okay? Just follow the, the website link and it will be there. So that's the number three. You need to know the people who are using this. You know, a house can be bad for somebody, but great for somebody else. So you got to find out what the chart is. That's the third part. And the fourth part, which is very, very, very important, time. You know, different periods of time will have different qualities. Even a good house can become bad, or a bad house can become good. So you want to make sure that it is timely. Okay? So we, in Chinese, we call it tong wong, timely. Untimely is tong wong, okay? That means not prosperous. So even if the house is like really not great, but it is timely, that means you get the positive energies right now. Okay? So this is something that, that, that is good that we can use. So you understand? Four steps. The guy's really loud, huh? Okay. All right. Any questions with these four steps right now? Any problems with these four steps? Okay. What do I mean by timing? Timing is divided into 20-year cycles and yearly cycles. So this is a good question. From 2004 until 2023, we are in period 8. 
Okay, period eight, part one, period eight, the eight cycle. From 2024 to 2043, we are going to reach period nine. Okay, we need to know the upcoming periods because we want to know which are the current prosperous, timely places inside or outside the home. Okay, we need that because now we're going to see whether we can use, utilize those areas or not. So if we don't know the timing, we just know, okay, so the house looks great, environment is fine, but don't know when it's useful. Okay, the timing is very important. So that is called a 20-year cycle. Now, sometimes you're already inside the house. Sometimes some residents are already living in the house. If they're already living in the house and they have current problems, let's say if a, there's a current problem, jobless is a, it's a problem, okay? And uh, they have health issues or they have relationship problems. So it's a current problem. You cannot go and plan 20 years for them, right? Now, 20 years time, you need to get a job, you know, die already, right? So you want to like instantaneously have effect. If you want instantaneous effect, then we need to look at the year cycles, okay? Because then it happens within the year. And if you want it even faster, we look at month cycle. You see what I mean? Okay, we have year cycle and month cycle. Now, here's the question. So do we follow 20 years or do we follow yearly? That depends. Do you, have, do you always have problems? If you always have problems, follow the early one. If you don't really have problems, you just want to move in and smooth sailing all the way, then don't worry about the yearly ones. Worry about the 20-year cycle. Okay, now, is 20 years long enough? Well, 20 years, a lot can happen, right? Right, companies get built. You know, think about Apple. In like 13 years, they became like the biggest company in the world, right? You don't even need 20 years. So, a lot can happen. So for that long-term um, purposes, we will set up the feng shui for long-term, okay? So now, I'm going to make an assumption here that we are buying this property, we're going in, and it's going to be for long-term because you don't want every year to change places, correct? So we want to do this long-term. So we're going to aim for long-term assessment. So along the way, I will explain to you how it is done, all right? So now, let's do with the first step. We got to analyze the environment, okay? So. To analyze anything in feng shui, you have to use two principles. Principle number one is what you see. Okay? You gotta see things. You gotta be able to see it. Visually see. Okay? So point number two, we gotta relate it to a formula. Okay? There's only forms, what you see, and formula. Everything in feng shui is only forms and formula. So most of the time, people are very, very into formulas, right? They keep calculating, this is my number, this is my direction. You know, before that, you got to see first. Does it have visually positive flow or chi? If it does, it may overcome bad formulas. Let me explain why. A formula is like, for example, in certain years, like 2012, the five yellow negative star is in Southeast. And if it reaches to southeast, and it will not be activated without negative forms. So let's say the forms are great. The negative star comes, nothing will be triggered. It's all positive. Okay? But if you have negative forms, and your negative star comes, it will be activated. Do you understand what I mean? Therefore, the principle is very simple. Forms over formula. Forms first, formula second. Okay, so if you fail to see the forms, your formula only works up to about 30%. Sometimes it won't work. You gotta see the forms. Okay, so we gotta check out the forms. So, now if this is the house, we gotta look outwards and see what are the forms in this environment. What can we do? Is it good? Is it not good? Okay, so we look around here. This is the first thing we wanna see. Now, obviously, since 90% of you are beginners, you don't know what the hell to see, right? Because I never tell you what to see, right? Okay, here's what you look for. Everything in feng shui can be boiled down to yin and yang. Okay? What is yang? Yang is solid, big objects like mountains. Yin is... Sorry, yang... <laughs> what am I talking? Yang is moving objects, okay? Like water, okay? Yang is moving objects like water or roads. Yin is solid objects like mountains or big structures. So. You want to look at the environment right now and identify what these are. Now, obviously, you cannot see any water, right? That's because you're looking at the wrong place. This is a road, right? Yes or no? So this is considered virtual water. Where we are standing on right now, 
This is a road. Does it not come all the way to the door? Okay, so this itself is considered water. Second thing, can you see this lump over here? Can you see this lump? Is it higher? Considered a hill. Okay, so you, cannot, you don't ignore these things, you know. These you have to analyze. The reason for that is very simple. You know, in feng shui, we have this principle in forms called green dragon, white tiger. Have you heard of that? Green dragon, white tiger is... Green dragon is the left side of your property that embraces your property. It's not the object of the dragon, okay? The left hills that protect your property. White tiger is the right hills. So you have two points. So from this property looking outwards, okay, just like give a quick view here. All right, from this property looking outwards, okay, can you see this side here? Can you see the land? Is it higher? Okay, and does it come up here? All right, this goes all the way until here, right? <coughs> Okay, so this arm, the, dra the green dragon arm on this side here, can you see? And there's bu this building here is the left side. Okay, this is your green dragon and white tiger. That's how you see it now. Previously, you don't see, right? Not trained to see. Now, you see with feng shui eyes, okay? You learn to see that. Now, it is obvious that the white tiger is better than the green dragon. How come? Sentimental, okay? This one, sharp, right? This one, sentimental. Now, look at the land. Okay, can you see that? Alright, so green dragon represents the male, white tiger represents female. So who's the boss in this house? Female. Good, so you want to buy this house? No. Uh, don't want to buy it, but guys, you don't want to go inside. Okay, this is for us to know, right? <laughs> Just in case, but we can fix that, you know? Just in case. Now, so for today we are neutral, okay? We, we, we help both sides. So I'm just going to tell you, right? So, now, in feng shui we want there's two things, incoming water and outgoing water, okay? People are always concerned with incoming water, because all oh, water must come in. Sometimes you want them to come in, sometimes you want to go out, okay? Because, you know, water is like flow, like you take in food, right? You go in here, you come out somewhere that is supposed to go out, okay? So, you cannot go in and out the same place, cannot, not so good, all right? So in feng shui, there are certain formulas that you can apply to see which is in and out. That is called water feng shui. Okay? Water feng shui basically says, where is the in, where is the out? So here is one basic principle. It always flows from high to low. Don't you think water flows from high to low? Can it be possible that water flow from low to high? Not possible. So can we, what you're standing on right now, is this an incoming or outgoing water? Outgoing, very good. Okay, now you see. But don't immediately think that outgoing is not good. Okay, we need to check which direction is it outgoing in. Because sometimes the outgoing direction is perfect. Unless it's going out the wealth direction. Okay, if it's going out the uh, earth direction, we call it storage water. Okay, I will show you how to do that when you apply formula. First, we take note of all this stuff. Okay, now, we have to look for sa chi in the environment. Sa chi. You know, sa chi is killing chi, alright? What is sa chi? Anything that remotely even look menacing. So normally we classify that as T-junction roads. We also classify that as pylons in the area. Or sharp neighbor's roof that directly points to the door. Okay, so, if we look around, we can see, okay, there is a sharp roof here, right? The corner of this... My laser pointer, please. Guys. Okay. Now, can you see this? This corner here? Now, it is... The developers have already put a plant here to block it. Okay, suppose, imagine no plant. Imagine. If you have no plant, will this immediately point to your main door? Yes. Okay? So, in your own house, you see such a thing, you must tell neighbor, please plant tree. Okay? Please, uh, no bagua mirrors and stuff like that. Because the people always think, oh yeah, let's put a bagua mirror and then it will like cast the, the thing away. Listen, the mirror only reflects light. It does not do anything to your feng shui. You can put a thousand mirrors and nothing will happen. Sachi is sachi. What you need to do, just block it. Okay? So this is one of the ways. Either the, tr the tree here or tree that side. This is what it is, alright? First thing. So this one will grow and it will block, so no problem. So from the main door, which is what we're looking at right now, from this main door, is it facing any sachi? Okay, so we want to come all the way here 
and we want to stand here looking out okay so when you look out from here you do not see any sachi that means this situation is okay now listen here is where people always get worried I got lampposts over here I got a corner over here remember your door is here you're only concerned with from here to here all the way out that's it the rest you're not not concerned uh, the lampposts over there facing this window don't care all right you're only concerned with the width of this door okay all the way out all the way out are there any sachi now of course you may think yeah but there's a sharp building opposite right listen if you look far enough surely there's a building somewhere you know <laughs> okay all right if you look far enough surely there's a building somewhere so you you cannot be ridiculous right it's just the immediate distance until that around roughly until that house is where you need to judge anything further than that is irrelevant to you okay in terms of sachi all right so it's up to here to there that's no see the trees in front they block it off okay so that's a good question she's talking about the lamppost that's in front of this door right but do you not have trees to block it off to, to block off that that poem so you don't have problems right and in fact if you look carefully when you stand at this door I want you to do this someone just stand in front of me and you look out can you see that this this little mound in front okay this mound in front I'm gonna try and point to it okay can you see this mound in front okay this mound in front and it, it comes all the way to the front it actually covers the front and you see now I'm pointing directly to the front and still it's still here can you see that can you see my light the laser okay so which means this is called white tiger crossing bright hall okay white tiger cross bright hall this the people stay in this house women become famous become successful make more money guys can stay home and then just feed off the wife it's great okay first indication all right so is it good for housewife or not not much use like it's not bad for housewives but not much use but then don't forget you got daughters right yeah the daughters will become successful okay so that would be great you like that okay so if your household is full of women you move in here all successful okay and the, and you're the guy I mean take care of you law what to do but we can fix that okay internally right so why because we don't have a natural hill on this side we don't have something that like mount on, on this side right you only got to mount this side okay can you clearly see this now you didn't notice this before coming in now you see it okay the thing is with feng shui the reason why you get a practitioner in is because they are trained to look for this stuff okay if it is your first time you may not pick up these points okay so you want to look at these little things here now until now I haven't even taken out the compass yet right imagine you get a, a so-called feng shui and then the feng shui guy just walks straight into your house and do the feng shui inside listen he's not doing feng shui he's decorating okay oh put this here put that there listen feng shui starts from the outside 70 percent starts from the outside okay so now this environment I, I understand this in uh, the whole area and built up here so I can give you some details here actually in the, in the near distance and you will see this from the third floor there's actually a very nice mountain we call it a greedy wolf mountain Tam Long Sing it's a good star that mountain itself governs nobility status and power it's right there at, at, at the back and you can see it from the third floor looking out right now you couldn't see it because you came here and just look at this house right but by right a full feng shui assessment involves the practitioner driving around the place to understand that environment because the feng shui comes from where environment it does not come from what materials you use to make this door what plants you put in the floor that does that doesn't do anything to you okay the most important is what natural features you have that's why it's worth so much right that's why you have to pay this consultant so much because they studied all this and now they understood the environment okay so I explained to you the environment at the back there is two very specific mountains that we want to use that will make up for the, the guys lacking power in this house okay <laughs> we build that up so that's called the Tam Long Sing greedy wolf star it's really good it's right at the back and you can see it okay and the second thing starts another mountain on that side called the Ru Yi mountain Yu Yi San it's part of the wealth and nobility uh, mountain formations so it's on that on that corner so we want to tap to that corner as well because all the chi comes from the hills it doesn't come from water water is the fertilization of the energy yin and yang male female who give birth you tell me females female give birth okay so the females in the environment is the mountains mountains don't move right water moves so water is yang okay so the water serves to activate 
the yin qi. Okay? So when we see this mountain in certain places, we just have to position the water in certain places so that yin and yang will match, positive qi produce. That's how feng shui is done. Okay? It is not put pagua mirror here, put two stone lion here. Okay? That one is decorations. You can have it, you don't have it, doesn't matter. Okay? I, I personally prefer that the house be as zen as possible. I mean, don't turn into a Chinese restaurant, it's not really that helpful. So you want to keep it really simple, really nice, okay? and so that qi can flow. Objectless is the best, okay? Feng Shui is about what? Aligning to the environment. You gotta first see what you have. So what do we have? We have nice hill over here. That means women are doing pretty good, okay? And we have the nice hill at the back, okay? We just have to tap to it. We haven't tapped to it yet. We know it's there. We haven't used it yet, okay? How do we use it? Formula. Formula will tell us how do you pull that qi in, okay? But we first have to see it, okay? So it's there. Now, also the design that you see, remember the, the first thing is environment, right? Second thing is building, right? So this building seems pretty all right. There's some missing corners here. But listen, every house to look beautiful must have some ins and outs. You can't expect a house that's totally square and still look beautiful unless you're building the Forbidden City, okay? So, but most houses will have ins and outs. The, mo the most important idea is you don't want to have an entirely big sector that's missing. So when we look at this house, it's relatively square. That's good enough. It, it qualifies. It's good. Relatively square is the key word. You don't want like, oh yeah, you know, it's like, it's a big missing area. That, then it's not so great. That need requires fixing, okay? But this house is relatively square, right? So we, we can accept that. That means the pocket is pretty good. The chi can be collected, okay? Now, the overall design of this place is like a round shape, right? Okay, do not worry about that because that involves the whole property development. And when you're buying a house, you're not going to sell the whole thing. You just want to know whether your house is good or not, okay? And most of the time, uh, when you guys like buy the house, you are going to stay in the house. So we're going to look for long term. It's irrelevant whether the, the whole area is round or square. Okay? But anyway, to satisfy your curiosity, we can talk about that later. We're going to talk about this house first as an individual, small perspective. Okay?